What's going on you guys, it's the Motorcycle Boss, and today we're gonna to be talking about light bulbs, specifically how you can tell if they're good, how you can tell if they're bad, the basic use of a multimeter to figure that out, as well as a couple of different variations that you might come across when you see motorcycles or cars. If you're new to my channel, my channel is all about motorcycle mechanics and how to save money. So if that sounds interesting to you, I would really appreciate it if you go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you think about it, the worst thing that can happen, you might learn something in one of these videos that'll help you save some money. So with that being said, let's get started. And today we're gonna to be talking about light bulbs. We're gonna be talking about single filament light bulbs, double filament light bulbs, and even we're gonna to touch on a little bit of HIDs. So the reason for this video is a lot of people will get a light bulb that goes out and they think they just replace it and then they're gonna fix it and that ends up wasting a lot of money because sometimes that's not the case. So I'm gonna teach you guys how to pretty much diagnose, see if a light bulb is actually bad. And I'm also gonna show you guys a little bit on how to use these multimeters. So it's gonna be a quick video, nothing too crazy. So what is a light bulb? A light bulb is basically going to be a filament suspended by two prongs for the most part. You're gonna have current that flows through it and as that current flows through it, it's going to heat up that element and that element is also encased in a gas to prevent oxidation and that element is typically tungsten. So if you kind of look at it, it's gonna be a single line that goes from one end through the filament and then out the other. So it's just a straight line with a little resistor in the middle for the most part. So the easy way to tell is if you see that line is broken, then that will tell you that that bulb is broken. However, it's not as easy to see in some bulbs, so you might have to use a multimeter to test to see if it works. This is where the multimeters come in. This is gonna be uh, pretty easy, pretty, st pretty straightforward. So on the multimeter, you're gonna have multiple settings. This one is a uh, auto ranging one, and that's typically the one you should probably get unless you're a stickler for manual arranging. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna set the dial to the continuity setting and I'll post that on the screen so you guys can see what that looks like and just about every multimeter should have this you should be making sure you have a multimeter that has this this is one of the more important settings so you're going to take your prongs or your leads and basically what's happening is when these two ends touch you're going to get an audible beep at least on this multimeter telling you that they are touching each other so even if this was through any piece of metal, so like let's say I have this and this should be conductive, the signal is going through the metal piece and able to be picked up by the other lead, letting them know that the surface you're touching is conductive and it is continuous, it's not broken. For instance, you notice they're not beeping right now because there's air in between, which is basically a resistor or a uh, uh, insulator, I'm sorry. And same thing here. Plastic does not transmit very well, so that's not going to work. So because we were talking about the filament, and the filament is basically just a straight line all the way through, and you can hear the beep here, so I'll set this aside. Not really any information is valuable on that. So on the end, you're gonna notice, and I'll bring this up a little bit closer for you. On the end, you're gonna notice you have this metal casing, which is essentially the ground, or the negative, and then you have this little metal part right in the middle, and that is going to be your positive. So the current will flow through here, go through one of the posts all the way through, and then come out the ground, or the other way around based on whatever theory you wanna go with. So the way you can test this is have it set to continuity, and you can touch one end here, and then touch the other end on the ground side. And then you should hear a beep as long as the filament is not broken. Just like that. So that's how you're able to really test it. This is a single filament bulb, if you can tell. It is not broken, so this is a good bulb. I'll give you a little bit more of a in-depth look at what's going on here. Let me see if you guys can see this. So this is a bulb that I broke, so that way I can kind of get access to it. Now, if you try to get this bulb to light up while it's open and broken like this, the filament wouldn't last very long because the gas keeps the oxidation off, but um, that gas has escaped, so now we're left with this. So this is still a continuous line, but I'm going to show you what happens when you have a bulb that's broken. We're going to test it first so I can show you guys. We're going to do the same thing, and it doesn't really matter which leads you use. 
So this is a continuous line, so this bulb will work except for the oxidation that it's gonna incur. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna snip this line right here. Just like that. Now I'm gonna just make sure that it's not touching in any way. So now if you can tell, let me see if I can get you guys to see this. That line is now broken. So we're gonna try and test it again. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna hold it here and then we're gonna to touch the bottom and we have nothing. No sound, no nothing. And that's because it's telling us that that line is broken. On some bulbs that you might not be able to see it as easily, so this is a good representation of that. So this will still apply to regular house bulbs. This will apply to turn signal bulbs, similar to this one. It'll apply to double filament bulbs, and we'll get to that in just a moment and even car headlight bulbs, just like this one. It's a little bit different shaped, but if you see, it's the exact same thing. You have one that you have one line that goes in, it goes up, and then goes through the filament, which is right there, and then comes out the other side. You can test this the exact same way by just touching the two prongs, and now you know that's a continuous line. So this bulb is not broken and is good for use. Now keep in mind, don't touch the bulb with your fingers. I'm not going to be using this anytime soon, so I'm not worried about it. So when it comes to HIDs, HIDs are a bit different. They have a gas contained within them. It's still a line in, and then coming from the top basically is a line that goes through and goes down. But in this ball right in the middle, there is no contacts that physically touch. They actually excite a gas that's inside and it creates an arc. So it's basically an air gap that gets jumped by an arc. So you will not be able to test this the traditional way to see if an HID will work. The best way to do it is to actually get a known good HID bulb and swap it out and see if it works. There are other components of the HID system, so that may not be the only thing that could be wrong, but if you're suspecting that the bulb is the problem, that's the, really the only way to check to see if it will work. When it comes to double filament bulbs, this is what a double filament looks like, where it's the same thing as a traditional single filament bulb, except you have two of them. In this setup, you're typically going to have a high beam and a low beam. As far as which one is which, it doesn't, I don't really know personally, I just know that Let's say you have your truck or your car or your motorcycle and you're going down the, the road and you have a red light that's on on your brake light, but it's not that bright. And then when you hit the brakes, it gets brighter. That is gonna be the, the low beam is the continuously running one and the high beam is the one that gets brighter. So sometimes one of them can fail. So you won't have a running light, but then when you hit the brakes, it'll get really bright. But then when you let go of the brakes, it'll get really dark and not work at all or the other way around. So you can test both of these. Now they still use a common ground. So this entire bulb surface right here, this uh, negative casing, this is still gonna act as the negative for both the high and the low. As far as which one's high and low, yet again, we still don't know, but this one will be the positive for the high and this one will be the positive for the low. So this is pretty easy to test. So you can start by putting one of these leads, yet again, remember, it doesn't matter which one goes either way. They're just looking to see if they can sense each other. And then you can test the low beam and the high beam just by touching this. So that one works, and that one works. So now you know both filaments in here are continuous, and this bulb should be good to work. You shouldn't have any problems with that. So now that you know how those work, it should be pretty easy to diagnose a light bulb that you may suspect is not working properly and test it pretty easily. Now, if you're looking for a budget voltmeter or DVOM, I actually have links in the description that will show you exactly where you can pick up different ranges, of, different price ranges of pretty good uh, voltmeters or multimeters that you can use to test resistance, voltage, continuity, which is the one that we're using today. 
a bunch of other ones. And this is the one that I personally use. This is called the FLIR DM92. This is a very expensive multimeter. Honestly, it's overkill for what I do. This one I used for years and it is a fantastic multimeter and has gotten me out of many, many pinches. And it's actually pretty affordable. I think this one, this particular model is actually out of stock now, but I will post a link in the description to show you comparable models to this one that I may recommend. So that way you guys can pick your own up and start diagnosing any of these common issues that you may have. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please give this video a like if it's helped you out or gave you any kind of good information. And I'd like to hear you guys in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video.